name? Morris? It's going to have simple, alternate leaves. The juvenile foliage is highly lobed. Find some. It's like it looks completely different. <laughs> That's not poison ivy. Oh. This is right here. Yeah. All over this. All over this. Kind of go out of me. You see those? See how the, the juvenile foliage can be lobed down here? Uh huh. Populus nigra cultivar italica. Lob Lombardi poplar. I almost called it lob lolly. That's not right. <laughs> number 11, right? Populus. I think it's number 12. No, it's number 11. It's number 11? Yeah. Okay. The one, I thought, when we started, never mind. That's fine. I don't know. I'm not keeping up. Look how y'all So, this is just like, what, up? Okay. This is going to be similar to your deltoides. The leaves are going to be much smaller. Um, the buds are going to be strongly oppressed to the stem. Wow, look at the trunk. Sugar hackberry. Oh, is this, is this the common hackberry that grows all over Texas? Yeah. I didn't know that was sugar. Yeah. So, this is, this is gonna have simple, alternate, entire leaves. It's in the old Maceae family, so it's going to have that oblique leaf base. It's going to have small brown fruit on it. And it's better characteristic. You can see it up here. See the small brown berries? And these are all hot berries, so you can see the variation in warts on the bark. It's going to have very warty bark called nipple gall. Oh. how you spell it. <laughs> no, G. I mean gall. G-A-L-L. -L. It's going to have pinnately compound leaves. Typically, it's going to have seven to nine leaflets. Can get up to 11. Um, this one, a good... It's going to have broader leaves than the um, Fraxinus, oh gosh, Volifera, I can't think of it, Volutna, yeah, and then it's going to have a lot thinner leaves than that. It's going to look similar to the Fraxinus texensis, but the leaf scar is going to be the giveaway. When you're green with envy, you frown. So the leaf scar is going downwards. You're green with envy, you frown. Maybe not quite as whip-like leaves. Still got the classic willow texture. Very fine. If you look at the stems, the stems are more brown than they are yellow. So this is the albatristis. This is the nigra. What's the contrast there? The brown stems. These are more yellow, stem. yellow green. I mean, it's going to have green stems on some of it, but even th so, it's still, you can still tell. Oh, and this bag. It's going to have a smooth top to the leaf. It's alternate. Simple, serrated margins.
going to have a gray stem with these black purple buds. This is going to be more resistant to Dutch elm disease than the other ones. Um, the reason it's a trash tree is because it has a really ugly canopy form to it. Species, the other species will have winged fruit. This one just happens to be a female. This fruit is typical of all houses. Mm -hmm. This one is going to have linear leaves. And it's going to have three to five leaflets, typically. Rarely seven. To its pinately compound leaf. And you said this monis is diocese. Diocese. <laughs> and the other one... They are diocese too. Are they all diocese? This is the Arizona? Yes. Volupna. Yes. Three to five leaflets. Three to three to five yeah. leaflets. And the biggest one is the, the, pen, the Pennsylvanica, sir. Pennsylvanica is um gonna have five to seven. It's gonna have broader leaves. It's gonna have the green with envy frowning leaf scar. This, don't worry about the leaf scar. I feel like you can tell the difference between the leaflets. Volupna. Oh. Look at the leaf scar pointing upward. It looks like it's oh. smiling. Oh. Smile if you're from Texas. It's cute. Oh, we're deep uh, only. Oh, so. so. Rounder leaflet, oh. broader leaflet. It, it would depend on the sun. Yeah. It's going to have, green. again, five to seven leaflets. Typically five <laughs> per leaf. Smile if you're from Texas. So, brown if you're green with it. Osage orange. It's also good. It's going to have simple, alternate. Entire leaves with a really long green petiole. Also, we'll have milky stem. What's that? Milky sap in it. It's going to have huge brain like fruit called a Osage orange or a horse apple. Okay. Is it edible? I see that. I don't think so. I don't think it's poisonous, but I don't think like if you split it open, it, it looks cool. It's just pretty. It's pretty seedy. Mm -hmm. Where's that plant? So we should find ornamental value. In yeah. You definitely. I mean, like for I guess for like florist purposes. <laughs> like I guess it's Whoa. an interesting. It's definitely an interesting fruit. <laughs> The only one you're going to get this probably confused with is persimmon. Yeah. Persimmon has the, the dark black buds, doesn't typically have as long as petioles, and doesn't have the milky sap. Oh. Tamarisk! Look at those old boy. Gallica. Gallica. When I was an undergrad, I learned Ramosissima, which is so much more fun to say. But this is not Ramos you don't put that on the switch. Salt cedar, tamarisk, tamarisk, tam... It is. This particular species is very invasive. It looks like it's got juniper-like foliage. So it's going to have tiny, lanceolate, Scale-like leaves, the pointed tip, it's going to have kind of a gray-green color, wispy stem, white texture, it's going to have typically an upright habit when it's not in a pot. Feathery light texture. 
I got my picture of that. Pink showy flowers in the, in early summer. It's pretty unique so far. Give me a lot to learn. You make your flashcard?